Institution of Engineers India, distinguished guests, and family members of Dr. Tat, Narla Tata Raugaru, representatives of media, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I feel it is a great privilege and honor to be amidst this August gathering and extend a warm and hearty welcome to the respected speaker and all of you to uh, Dr. Narla Tata Rao, 21st Endowment Lecture. Today, I am very happy to be associated with this memorable event. I would like to mention a few things about Telangana State Center, and I am proud to announce that the Telangana State Center was the only center in, in among the 125 centers of the Institution of Engineers awarded with ISO certificate. And Telangana State Center has more than 10,000 carpet members on its rows and 19,000 plus non-carpet members in its rows. And Telangana State Center is the one of the most active center of the Institution of Engineers, which engages successfully in translating the objectives, vision, and mission of the Institution of Engineers into practice. And it has bagged two times the State Center Award and is also playing a very important role in dissemination of information on engineering and contemporary technology, bringing industry, academia, experts, and professionals together on the same platform by regularly organizing international conferences, national conventions, all India seminars, conferences, workshops, roundtable conference, and panel discussions, and throughout the year, almost one program or event every fourth day. I am glad to inform that the Telangana session of the Institution of Engineers has been regularly organizing 18 endowment lectures every year on the birthdays in the honor of the eminent engineers like Engineer V. Subbarao, Engineer M. Tirupatredi, Dr. J. Prashottam, Engineer Koka Krishna Mohan Rao, Engineer J. V. Subbarao, Engineer T. Hanumant Rao, and Engineer A. P. Ranganath Swami, Dr. S. Raghavachari, Dr. Narla Tata Rao, and Engineer Matur Gopal Rao, and Engineer Gurram Kodredi, and Engineer Atlur Venkateshwar Rao, Dr. John A. Murray, and Dr. N. V. R. L. N. Rao, uh, and Engineers L. Venkatakrishna Iyer, K. V. Srinivas Rao, and M. L. Swami Endowment Lecture, lecture and Dr. A. Ramakrishna and Engineer I. Basavaraju endowment like this. I take this opportunity uh, to say a few words about the veteran eminent engineer Dr. Narla Tata Rao Garu. Dr. Narla Tata Rao born on September 4th, 19, in the year 1917, completed his Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Mechanical Engineering from the Banaras Hindu University. Uh, Varanasi and a diploma from the Jamshedpur Technological Institute of the Tata Iron and Steel Company, Disco Limited, Jamshedpur. He then did his MS in the Power Systems Engineering from the Illinois Institute of Technology, Chicago. The, J, the JNTU Hyderabad later conferred on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science and Dr. Rao served Madhya Pradesh Electricity. From 1948 to 1972, in various capacities, right from divisional engineer to the vice chairman. Dr. Tata Rao built the Madhya Pradesh Electricity Board as an NVS organization. He then worked as member thermal during 1972-74 with the Central Water and Power Commission Government of India. Dr. Narla Tata Rao has also been the president of the Central Board of Irrigation and Power New Delhi during the year 1976-79 to 79, and chairman of the National Council of Power Utilities during the year 1980-88. to 88. He also served the Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board as its chairman during the year 1974-1988. to 1988. Dr. Tata Rao became synonymous to the energy sector in Andhra Pradesh. And Dr. Tata Rao increased the installed capacity of the state grid fivefold by conceiving generation 
projects like Vijayawada Thermal Station, Nagarjan Sagar, Sri Salem, and Lower Sileru Hydro Power Project. He formed a strong base for the state's electricity sector, which is now considered one of the best in the country. Dr. Rao was also chairman Energy Research Commission, Committee of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Research, popularly known as CSIR, New Delhi, the chairman of the expert group on development of power technology, planning commission, government of India, and member expert committee on Environ project and government of Maharashtra, and also as a consultant to the Asian Development Bank on the recognition, reorganization of the Bangladesh Power Development Board. And in 1992, he was appointed as advisor and power to the Honorable Chief Minister of the then Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Tata Rao won several awards at national and international levels and also brought laurels to the engineering profession and the motherland. So Dr. Rao has been a recipient of the Golden Jubilee Award of the CBI uh, IP New Delhi for the year 1978. And President of India conferred on him the Padma Sri in 1983. He was also re recipient of Bharat Ratna Sir M. Mashagundam Visheshwaraya Award instituted by the government of Andhra Pradesh and the Institution of Engineers, AP State Center in the year 1985 and the Om Prakash Basin Award in the year 1986. The IBPL Urja Research Foundation Mumbai selected Dr. Narla Tatarao as the Energy Man of the Year for the year 1995. The Institution of Engineers India honored him with Honorary Life Fellow of the Institution of Engineers India in the year 1997 during the 12th Indian Engineering Congress held at Bangalore. Dr. Tata Rao also stood behind us in all our endeavors such as World Energy Congress, and etc. Dr. Tata Rao also used to mention that the Honorary Life FIE conferred on him by the Institution of Engineers India is higher than any other honor. We river engineering legendary of the era, Dr. Narla Tatarao, who made laudable contribution in the power sector and brought laurels to the engineering profession. The tributes we can pay to Dr. Narla Tatarao is to emulate his qualities and follow his footsteps. Today, Telangana State Center has arranged Dr. Narla Tatarao 21st endowment lecture on project management of power transmission and distribution systems by engineer Surya Prakash FIE, the, one of the eminent civil engineer. Since I know we are awaiting to listen to him, he is very apt, apt at the, uh, the topic of the project management of power transmission and distribution systems. Uh, so I limit here itself to listen to our eminent speaker. And I hope that you will definitely enjoy the technical uh, this lecture at the end of. And before myself uh, requesting him to deliver his lecture, on behalf of the Telangana State Center of the Institution of Engineers, and on my own behalf, I once again extend a hearty welcome to the respected speaker in the Peace Prakash FIE, and all of you to this important day, event. And I request now Engineer Srinivasa Charikar, the chairman of the ECM and the convener of today's event, to kindly introduce Engineer P. Svira Prakash Karu before he delivers his lecture. Thanks and one and all. And over to Engineer Srinivasa Charikar. Sir, thank you, sir. Uh, it is uh, customary and also it is my privilege to introduce today's speaker uh, on project management of power transmission and distribution systems. Today's speaker, P. Surya Prakash Agaru. Surya Prakash, P. Surya Prakash is born in the year 1964, studied B.Tech Civil from Jain to Pakinada and uh, uh, M. M.S. Civil from IIT Madras. Presently, he is managing director Sachavani Projects and consultants Hyderabad since 1994. Past president, 
ACCEI, past president of pre engineering structures, Society of India, founding trustee, smart infrastructures, engineering services, passionate projects plan India and abroad, employing, employing 100 engineers in his organizations. He is council member of the Institution of Engineers India for the period 2021 and 2025. Member of prof many professional bodies like ECI, ACCEI, IEI, ICI, IBC, INS DAG, IRC, ICBA, and IA Structure Engineer. Handle projects for Ministry of Defense, Public Sector, State Government. Designed engineering project management of buildings and infrastructure projects. Expert faculty for ISKI and SAI in transmission line design and project management. Working for enhanced, enhanced respect to engineers, improve process and standards in delivering infrastructure projects. Registration of for professional engineers and the continued education are need of power to improve quality and increase employment. Motivating students to join in finishing school and industry training to enhance employability. Adjunct for faculty in CBIT and the Vasvi College of Engineering. Now I request Mr. P. Surya Prakash Garu to deliver his lecture today on project management of power transmission and a distribution system. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you Chairman Garu and uh, Secretary Garu for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk on the, on the day of uh, endowment lecture of such a stalwart, Nal Tatara Garu. Uh, I would like to mention, I had the opportunity to meet, sir, once in uh, VTPS uh, switchyard design. I, I was designing VTPS switchyard and he came as an expert uh, during 92, 93, if I remember correct. So I am privileged uh, to have met him once and uh, I know about his uh, achievements in uh, our sector. And uh, uh, I also had the opportunity to work on several projects in transmission and distribution in uh, a combined state of Pradesh and uh, other states of India. So I would like to share the experience that I gained through this. Actually, this is a, uh, you are able to see full screen, sir. Sorry, Garu. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Screen uh, is okay, sir. Okay. Is okay. Up, sir. Okay, sir. So uh, today. Make it full screen, sir. Full screen, full yeah. Screen. Okay. okay, okay. Good, sir. Okay, otherwise it's okay, sir. Otherwise okay. Now, now it's okay, sir. Full screen okay. now. Okay, sir. Uh, very much visible, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I had the opportunity to work on uh, various transmission projects and uh, this one, which I'll be sharing during course of my presentation. And also, I had the opportunity of uh, training uh, engineers in various electricity boards uh, in India and abroad through our ISKI since 1992, and also Central Institute of Rural Electrification uh, for uh, foreign delegates also. So I, I keep training uh, engineers on this uh, computer design of transmission towers and uh, project management of transmission line construction and uh, distribution system. So today I'll be sharing uh, some of my experience. Uh, I know most of you are very experienced and uh, experts in this field. I'll try to uh, touch upon uh, that expertise points and try to finish in half an hour, sir. Charigar? Uh, yeah. So I'll try to finish my lecture in half an hour. And uh, so the overview of my presentation is introduction to the topic today. And uh, project management, uh, I'll give a brief about the, what all project management issues we uh, do in implementation of these projects of transmission line towers. I am, because I am basically a civil engineer, I will try to cover civil engineering aspects of all these uh, transmission lines 
and uh, it, I always come across. In fact, I was trained by electrical engineers in transmission line tower design and switchyard design. So, because mostly in electricity boards, uh, it is the uh, electrical engineers who will be managing this uh, design part of uh, civil and structure also. And we, I'll also be covering on uh, switchyard and substations, uh, brief and distribution lines, and uh, SCADA, uh, which I had the opportunity to work for Hyderabad City SCADA project. We designed the towers, of course, only civil part of SCADA. And finally, conclusion and discussion of the topic. So let's uh, get into the introduction. We all know how the power generation is growing almost twofold in the last uh, decade, actually. Almost a decade, the power generation has grown twofold. And the renewable sources also is growing, as we can see. Except for two years during the pandemic, uh, where there is a negative growth, uh, but uh, overall there is a huge growth in the generation of the power. And once there is growth in the generation, we all know we have to add transmission and uh, distribution networks also. And uh, this is the data I collected installed capacity uh, in this decade, if we see how it is transforming, like uh, from 56% uh, coal-based thermal power plant generation is going to shrink to 32%. That is, while the overall growth is there, the coal-based uh, power is going to reduce and the solar is going to increase drastically from 8% to 36%. And bio and other, uh, though, is not much uh, growth. There is a growth, but percentage share-wise, it will be lesser compared to the current uh, scenario. <clears throat> and wind generation is going to grow to 17. This I'm talking about the overall, uh, all over India share. Next is the gross generation, uh, again, in this decade, also is going to grow from 3% of solar to 23% of solar and 75% coal is going to reduce to 50%. So why I'm mentioning this uh, in my introduction is that means we have to be prepared for this transformation from uh, coal-based thermal uh, generation to uh, solar generation. And it calls for number of changes in the network, whether it is transmission or distribution and uh, substation. And, uh, if you look at the transmission network, it has grown uh, uh, drastically fra, from 4,14,000 kilometers circuit kilometers to 4,78,000 circuit kilometers. And if we see the substations, 8 lakh substations to uh, uh, 11 lakh substations. So it's almost like 25%, that means 8% uh, CAGR growth is there in uh, uh, transmission and the substation. And HVDC also has grown drastically uh, in terms of megawatts sub, uh, substation, uh, 22,000 to uh, 30,000 uh, uh, substations. Next is the, sorry. Uh, Next is the India needs to spend about $39 billion in, on transmission and infrastructure design. We all know we, we have many lines which are quite old and uh, also the network st stabilization. We have seen grid collapses in the last decade and uh, we have to work on the stabilizing this uh, network for uh, grid stability also. Next is the coming to the distribution network. We all know there are huge losses, pill phrase actually in the, uh, in the distribution network. And uh, government of India has allocated 3 lakh crores in the coming five years to enable financially strained uh, electricity distribution companies to uh, have the support and uh, mainly transformer metering and prepaid smart consumer metering and also I feel we should have a net metering concept for uh, encouraging more solar in the uh, residential sector. And uh, also it should be spent on power loss reduction and uh, 
strengthening of the network. So this is the brief background I wanted to share with you so that uh, we'll all be prepared to handle the projects that are going to come up uh, in implementation of the transmission network and distribution network. And we need to uh, upgrade and uh, upskill our engineers for uh, getting ready to implement these uh, uh, transmission network substations. And uh, so where the project management skills are very essential for implementing these projects. So transformation of the generation, transformation of the generation, and uh, we have to also work on transmission and distribution networks uh, to interconnect these uh, different generation that we have seen in the introduction before, and a switchyard and substation uh, to be installed. And uh, this is, uh, of course, I use it for the sake of uh, training uh, how the overall generation to uh, substation and substation to distribution and last uh, service transformer part, how the power uh, goes and uh, various uh, 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 KV ratings uh, starting from 765, 500 HVDC, and we have 400 uh, KV, 230 KV, and 132 KV uh, transmissions. And distribution, we all know we have 3311 uh, and 440. And uh, this is another uh, diagram just mm -hmm. to explain to the people about the transmission network and distribution. And uh, grid substations that, uh, that are very much. Uh, required and uh, this is the grid substation and also i had the opportunity to work on this uh, spun concrete pole uh, uh, transmission uh, design 132 kv double circuit uh, suspension and uh, single circuit uh, 220 kv uh, suspension also using the spun concrete poles in fact uh, we all know in the, yeah, particularly hyderabad we have this spun concrete pole manufacturers for in the last 20 years, but uh, 30 years actually. That, but the implementation is limited to distribution up to 33 kV. But I worked on designing these poles for utilization in 130 kV and 220 kV. <clears throat> so this is the drawing uh, for this uh, 130 kV single circuit tangent tower. And this is the double circuit suspension using the insulated uh, cross on and uh, this is the tangent and uh, the main components of uh, substation the earthing systems and uh, the control room control panel this is what i wanted to share today i had I, we were the consultants in 2020 appointed by uh, andhra pradesh uh, pmu for world bank funded project of uh, ap hazard mitigation and emergency cyclone reconstruction project, where we worked, we studied the entire AP transmission and distribution network uh, with experts on our panel. Uh, uh, and uh, we studied the design criteria, quality assurance and construction practices. And we also st st documented the status of the transmission system. And we are given the recommendations for uh, uh, upgrading the transmission structures particularly and foundation for the sake of hazard mitigation for the revised loading and uh, frontal wind loading, which was not there in the IS 875 those days. So we have given the recommendations for type of structures and type of foundations for performance of this uh, transmission system. And we also studied the substations and uh, switchyards and distribution network in particular. I'll be sharing some of the photographs during my presentation. Next, uh, we also had the opportunity to work on design standardization of the transmission towers. Uh, we all know there was a huge uh, a hue and cry about uh, revision in the IS-802, which is a code for uh, transmission tower. And uh, uh, later, the, after the workshop in CPRI, almost all the electricity boards were equivocal on uh, changing the provisions of draft uh, code after 92 uh, to liberalize because the cost of the transmission network was going up and uh, the uh, IS802 was further revised and uh, what is now uh, available 
ease the code based on uh, revised provisions, but still we have, we could contain the increase in the cost because there was an argument that uh, one and a half percent failure uh, in transmission network, uh, which is an acceptable thing, rather than increasing the cost by 10% or 15%. This was the argument of all the electricity board, which was accepted by Bureau of Indian Standard. And uh, then the code was uh, further revised. And also, <clears throat> we worked on standardization of 400 kV towers and uh, 220 kV towers uh, based on this revised uh, 90 uh, uh, revised draft code of IS 802. And uh, uh, I was uh, part of that team working with uh, Venugopal Rao at the time, transmission uh, member. Uh, and uh, 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 we had uh, director technical also. Uh, I remember interacting very closely with that and uh, working on this uh, standard. Next is the SCADA project of Hyderabad city. Also, we worked uh, the visits of the tower that you see, uh, 80 meter, uh, 90 meter high tower. We are for interconnecting all the 100 substations in the city. We had the opportunity to work on design of those towers. And next is the uh, one of the prestigious project uh, we worked is Rai Chu to uh, Solapur uh, 765 kV since a 2000 megawatt evacuation uh, line on BOT model we had the uh, opportunity to work on. Apart from 400 kV line from Samadri to Hyderabad, Samadri uh, power generation to Hyderabad, for, out of 400 kilometers, 100 kilometers, we were uh, part of the design for the contractor, of course. So this is my background in the introduction. I wanted to share my experience with you so that when I talk subsequently, in fact, I would like to go fast on actual topic because I see all experts here uh, I thought there will be more younger engineers to whom I should give this uh, knowledge, but uh, uh, because most of you are experts, I'll quickly run through my uh, 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 slides. So the define the need and quantum of power is the basic first thing we have to end and understand the grid connectivity and uh, then transmission line, substations, distribution line, we have to identify the packages and we have to also have the funding model and decide the contract type. This is the overall global scale project management activity that we do. And uh, contract type, uh, whether it is a public private partnership, depending on funding model and BOT, EPC, design, design build item rate contract and the supply and install contracts also. So we had the opportunity to work on all these types of uh, contracts. And uh, SOP for uh, project management, we all know starting with planning uh, feasibility studies for the proposed uh, network and DPR preparations uh, and the funding models. And then finally, project management implementation. So this is the project management uh, uh, starting from planning, costing, and the quality plan, scheduling of the project, and the safety aspects of the implementation supervision of the project coordination and the contract administration. So these are all the steps in the uh, project management. And in the planning stage, we have design basis report, concept design, consultants appointment and uh, design development for uh, uh, design development, including prototype testing of the towers and a specification schedule, budgetary costing and uh, appraisals uh, and uh, finally technical sanction for the project and uh, costing uh, we'll start from budgetary cost to the final bill certification. We do the cost management in project management and value engineering, the, which is most important in overall uh, budget uh, to be utilized correctly. And uh, quantity survey uh, and vendor selection, cost management, specification control, and the change management. And the quality plan starts with quality assurance plan and the quality control as per the codes and the provision and quality audit documentation. And uh, finally, quality value is uh, very important and the specification quality. Scheduling starts with the uh, target dates, milestones to procurement plan to manpower deployment 
and activity control and updation of the uh, uh, schedule from time to time. Safety uh, desired level to be decided, communication of uh, safety uh, implementation and enforcement of safety guidelines, machinery, manuals, prevention and protection. In fact, uh, I had a, a very good experience in transmission I must share here because we are talking about safety. When the stringing was in operation, we all know the conductors will be kept on rollers uh, for stringing from the anchor tower to the anchor tower. About seven locations we have rollers. It so happened, it's a very rare occasion. We all know in the month of maximum accidents in transmission happened during April, May because of the uh, 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 storms, uh, gale, gale storm. And uh, it so happened when uh, the, they have left the uh, conductor on rollers, there was a huge wind, not the design wind speed, but uh, definitely that is a safety condition we all know. In a safety condition, normally we don't check for the wind uh, because we assume that when the work is happening, the safety uh, uh, condition need not have the wind because when there is wind, people can't work. But it so happened when the conductor was on the rollers, the people have left the site and there was a storm during that evening after they left the site because I, I did the study of that uh, collapse of towers during erection, 400 kV. And we found that the wind span, which normally we consider one and a half times the normal, normal span, has gone beyond two spans, actually, because of conductor being on rollers. And the, uh, there was a cascading effect on failure of tower, and towers have failed. So it's very important, uh, in fact, uh, not to leave uh, the conductor on rollers even for a night break, actually. So we have to lock the conductor. This is very safety precaution. One of the safety precautions we have to take while doing the stringing operation of the transmission towers. Any, any rating, whether it is 400 kV, 220 kV, or 130 kV. So this is one big lesson we learned in safety. Next is the supervision. In fact, I insist on method statements. I recommend uh, follow, following of method statements for every activity in construction, whether it is a foundation or tower erection or stringing operation, because that will ensure that the quality is maintained. And we also follow uh, quality registers to be maintained as per the CVC norms. <coughs> I'll be sharing briefly those things. And the stage passing of every stage in fact, uh, for towers, transmission towers, we developed eight stage, stage passing, uh, starting from foundation, pouring of concrete to stub setting, to erection of the tower and the stringing of the conductor. Eight stages and the material uh, fabrication, dispatch and pre-dispatch inspection and honorable inspection of the material. So um, material inspection reports also we developed for these uh, towers. Next is the coordination in project management is very important between the project, client, consultants, and vendors. And uh, drawings, uh, coordination, financial, uh, co that is cash flow projections and from time to time. And the project on web, which we have been implementing for last 22 years, and meetings regularly with the, all the concerned parties. And we have also developed a process document for project management, which we follow in all our projects and formulation uh, that is the uh, inception phase, formulation phase, and execution phase. We developed this. I'm not going into the detail, but I'm just sharing the overall flow of the project in project management. Next is the project implementation phase. Uh, variance, whatever variance that happens, because we all know there will be changes in the project due to site conditions, due to specification change, and we have to manage these changes and uh, the, no variance without approval, without change in the amendment to the technical sanction should be acceptable. So this is the machinery deployment and uh, progress of individual activities and milestones, which is very important. And we have started implementing LED class in every 
milestone actually of course final milestone this ld will be adjusted if they have made up uh, or if they have made the catch up schedule in the project so this is the project schedule regarding the project schedule and monitoring and controlling and uh, continuous uh, change management whether it is time cost or quality or specification change has to be done by the project management uh, consultant and uh, process document to be followed by all the concerned electrical structural services like uh, uh, other uh, mechanical and all and project management consultant and uh, starting from preliminary investigation for the project to formulation of the project master plan planning and scheduling statutory and mandatory requirements and design and engineering we have developed this process document for implementation of the projects and standards and codes and quality control like uh, for transmission particularly we use a cbip manual in transmission which is very handy which is very well documented in fact i appreciate uh, uh, the document very well because i have been using the last 30 years uh, this cbip manual whether it is for the design of foundation or design of towers or detailing of the towers and even uh, the erection and the stringing of the conductors uh, so the process is uh, defined for uh, all the uh, activities and we also had the opportunity of correcting the errors errors do happen in the project but we should have a mechanism to correct these errors and we define define a method statement for uh, and a process for correction of these errors that happen and this is the list of registers that we prepare and the format of the registers which we have been following for last 20 years and deliverables of uh, in the project management or value engineering report cost time quality budget schedule and plan all this have to be kept in mind in every stage of the project consultant engagement construction engineering report that means the method of implementation of the project and a structured group site enabling report particularly for transmission lines we have to divide the zones and have the uh, warehouse uh, and uh, the workshops for, uh, at the various locations particularly for long distance uh, lines and method statements as i mentioned material inspection reports nc non compliance reports and periodical reports and all that so these are all the daily progress report formats and weekly progress reports that we make and uh, photographs to be documented from the start date to end date and last week to current week we take the photographs and document and foundation various stages we record through the photographs and uh, erection also during the erection of the tower uh, particularly we have to have the quality checks at every stage and the clearance of uh, every stage erection and uh, progress of uh, activities including stringing insulator fixing and um, then monthly progress also we have the reporting formats that we develop and safety is one of the very important thing in uh, to be documented in the monthly progress report and cost tracker project tracker and the cost percentages time schedule and the updation of the time schedule tracker and uh, i'll quickly uh, run through so that we will not uh, call cross our time today and the plan versus actual esco in the project cost and the minutes of meeting test plan test plan for various uh, material that we use also is to be prepared and it should be part of the contract document and we implement that test plan during implementation of the project so steel concrete and uh, the conductors everything we have to have a test plan for uh, all the materials and checklist for uh, stage passing uh, of every stage also and uh, this is the stage passing card or green card so we use all these things in our uh, projects implementation and the contract administration next very very important thing element of the project actually we are successful in implementing very complicated projects 
with this vendor pre-qualification. Uh, in fact, we even deviated from uh, routine norms and uh, we have developed the pre-qualification of the vendors, uh, which will suit to the project requirement and bidding process and budgeting uh, with nowadays with the GST resin, we don't take any taxes and finally take the final GST to be added at the end so that there is no input uh, uh, credit complications in the project implement. Competitive bidding, contract management, bills verification and condition, con contract condition enforcement. These are all the part of project management in the contract administration. So this is a pre-qualification and a pre-qualification document assessment that we do and a running bill, account bills, also we have a standard format. So this is about project management uh, part. I wanted to share with you our expertise in implementing various types of projects. We had the experience of managing projects costing uh, even 1,000 crore plus of single project delivered in two and a half years. Like that, we have done two, three projects also in project management. And uh, transmission lines, we are all aware we have EHV transmission, UHV transmission, and DC, DC transmission. And uh, in, term, in terms of towers, we have single circuit, double circuit, and vertical configuration, horizontal configuration, and staggered configuration. We also come across transposition towers for 400 kV and above. And multi-circuit towers, we have uh, in some cases, and river crossing towers for which we have a separate code, railway crossing towers and highway crossing towers. So we design, we have to uh, detail and implement all these uh, uh, types of towers. And, uh, and we start with the recognizing survey of the line and alignment survey uh, and uh, our walkover survey. And then we do the detailed survey and check survey. So the check survey during implementation. So in the planning, uh, evacuation to distribution points, we plan alignment by walkover survey. And nowadays, Google is very handy. In fact, we have implemented uh, many projects uh, by spotting before walkover survey itself, identifying the location through Google Earth and uh, then we go for walkover survey after that. And this is the, uh, we did in Madhya Pradesh, we could identify the forest areas and we did the valley engineering of the line uh, because uh, uh, though the length of the line may increase, avoiding forest, because I was uh, coming, uh, I was hearing recently, some projects even getting stalled for 20 years because of the environmental clearance or forest clearance any type of project it is very difficult so it is better to avoid uh, lines going through the forest even i remember uh, in uh, andhra pradesh apscb discussions on uh, forest lines going through forest reducing the right of way and increasing the height of the tower uh, thai krishna Rao, uh, i used to interact with him and uh, we were discussing about compact lines and increasing the height of the tower so that we reduce the tree cutting when we go through this uh, forest. So this line uh, root alignment, we decide using uh, Google uh, Earth very advantageously. And we have done that. And we did the later after Google uh, Earth um, uh, spotting, we did the walkover surveys and we document like this and uh, with the photographs and uh, Next is the root survey map. We do the alignment fixing to decide the type of towers and uh, using the sack curve, hot curve, and cold curve. And uh, tower spotting we did for these uh, things. So I'm just giving information, probably even if, uh, uh, because this is being recorded in YouTube, it can be useful for uh, in young engineers who are not having exposure they can learn from this uh, tower spotting and the schedule of towers we decide like this. And then soil testing. This is very different and uh, typical for transmission towers. We do the uh, type of soil and it's, uh, though I'm a civil engineer, I found it very advantageous, uh, whatever is documented in CBIP manual, type of soils, normal dry soil, sandy soil, black cotton soil, fully submerged soil, partially submerged soil. 
which we can determine by uh, just trial pits uh, of uh, three and a half meter, four meter trial pits we can do. And I implemented this in many projects across India, just using the CBIP manual guideline in deciding the type of soil. And uh, because the most of the tower foundation designs are governed by uplift only. That means the top layer of the soil only is important. And we all know backfill soil, the unit weight is 1440 uh, uh, kg or 1.44 ton per cubic meter. And these are all the types of foundations that we use. Uh, we all know dry foundation, wet foundation, undercut uh, type foundation. So this is a PCC dry foundation. And uh, this is a pad type foundation, RCC. And uh, these are all where we have water table in wet foundations. We have successfully used the soling and dewatering systems to implement these uh, foundations. And these are some of the photographs for the benefit of youngsters. And this is undercut type of foundation. And uh, uh, this is a photograph of wet foundation with Soli. And uh, this is the pad type foundation drawings. And uh, we have done even strengthening of the foundations where we, due to the changes in the quadrant provision or upgradation of the line. So by such kind of uh, strengthening also, we did like this, compacted backfill with the marum on black bottom soils and non cohesive soil foundations. And uh, these are all the foundation quantities for tender that are generated and pile foundations, which also we have uh, implemented in some of the lines. So river crossing foundation is another very challenging and important thing. And uh, sometimes well foundations are also used apart from other than, and we can see this template here set on the river crossing foundation. So these are all the battered file, files in river crossing foundation and the rectification of structures in uh, black bottom soils also. We have done an anchoring of foundation, rock foundations, rock anchors that we use uh, for uplift resistance in uh, hard rock because cutting hard rock is a very tough thing. So we have given the rock anchor foundations also. Black cotton soils, stiff foundations, and uh, under emer piles, and uh, design software that uh, I have developed uh, for transmission towers, starting from sag tension calculations to electrical clearances to profile fixing, and uh, expert data for base fixing, and the structure optimization, geometry, redundant members, and uh, analysis design detailing, and foundation design. So these are all available in the software that we use special software for design of transmission towers. In fact, this is the 400 kV transmission data type tower that we have designed. Uh, and this is the uh, differential legs also can be modeled. And this is the staggered uh, thing. And these are all the reports for low trees and uh, design report, bill of materials uh, and uh, analysis uh, reports and load reports. So all drawings also generated in the software. And uh, this is the prototype testing, we all know, uh, which is a very essential part of uh, transmission towers. So unless uh, the tower design is prototype tested, we cannot implement uh, all uh, four types of towers, uh, A, B, C, D. And uh, this is the testing foundation model. And tower detailing and shop drawings. So it starts with the stubbed uh, uh, detailing Stub is another uh, great invention in transmission towers, very efficient and uh, very cost effective system. And uh, this is the template. And for template also, now we have got this tripod systems in uh, replacing the template for large base width uh, of the tower. And uh, single line drawing to detailing, structural detailing, various uh, uh, body extensions and uh, cross arms and the peak, and uh, this is the bend level. And in substations also, we have these uh, columns, gantries, and uh, equipment structures, and then stub detailing. And this is a detailing for uh, spun concrete uh, pole structure. And this is the A-type tower, B-type tower, C-type, and D-type. 
uh, and uh, this is a road crossing, highway crossing and river crossing and railway crossing towers and hill crossing. Next is the substations. So we all know substations are uh, different types of substations we have, 400 to 400 by 220, 220 by 130, 132 by 33, 33 by 11, and 33 by point, uh, 430. So these are all the substations and classification based on transmission substation, distribution substation. We have converter substation and switching substations. We have classification by insulation, gas insulated or oil insulated and classification by structure, pole structure or lattice structure. So this is the substation and uh, switch yards we have. And uh, these are all some of the photographs. So as I said, uh, transmission substation, distribution substation, and uh, elements of a substation are cable trench, control room, columns, beams, transformer, gantry, circuit breakers, isolator, lightning arresters, potential transformers. All these are equipments. Equipment structures are all, because when I started my career, I was not very clear about these things. Then I thought I must train engineers with all these uh, photographs and drawings so that they'll be able to understand what is each uh, uh, element that we use in the substations and uh, switch yards. And the uh, bus bars, we all know, and uh, then circuit breaker, my main co components, uh, and uh, then uh, this is a circuit breaker detail, and uh, this is an isolated detail, and a current transformer detail, and potential transformer detail, and lightning arrestor, and insulators. <coughs> and uh, pin type insulator, suspension type insulator, and the strain type, and wave traps. Uh, and uh, then we have these uh, switches. And earthing system, and metering control and uh, uh, control room. And uh, current uh, power transformers are at substation, and substation control room with CC flooring, and uh, cable trench in the control room, and outdoor cable trenches, and outdoor cable trench. And uh, so these are all uh, drawings of a control room and uh, designs and reports of a substation. We prepare the layouts. We have the single line drawing and uh, the details of the equipment. And then we prepare this. And finally, we design the beam column. And uh, so these are all the reports generated for these uh, designs and the power transformer, all this equipment again, okay, more in detail. And this is the equipment support structure, lattice type. We have pipe type structures also and foundation for the equipment. <coughs> Isolators and uh, lightning arrester. And we have this uh, fencing, gate detailing, and uh, these uh, structures for <coughs> lattice structures. So these are all the drawings for uh, various uh, elements and substation and the switching stations and uh, transformers and the control room. Finally, distribution lines. <coughs> we have to design these distribution lines in urban area. In Hyderabad, we all know we have a narrow base uh, tower for 33 kV we have designed with the two meter uh, uh, narrow base. And uh, rural areas, we have poles and uh, uh, we have done the study of various distribution poles in rural areas, which are implemented without proper design documentation. Even pole foundation we have to design. And we also have underground uh, distribution and war at distribution. In uh, Hyderabad, particularly the layouts, uh, the, uh, the gated communities and all, we are designing the <coughs> underground uh, network of distribution. And uh, concrete uh, poles, uh, pre-stress concrete poles, spun concrete poles, and steel poles also we have in the distribution. And the stem foundations, tay wires, double pole structure, quad pole structure, and coastal area poles and PSCC poles. So these are all the, some of the distribution uh, poles that we have used and underground cabling and uh, distribution lines. So foundation for these uh, poles and uh, distribution lines.
Finally, the SCADA, as I said, we work for Hyderabad network. And uh, I would like to conclude with this, with any uh, discussion points from learned members in our group. Or you can give me any inputs for my future uh, training of people. So I thank uh, our Telangana State Center for giving me this opportunity to be a speaker on such a covering personality of uh, Narla Tatar, our endowment lecture. And uh, I'm privileged actually, and very happy to have been a uh, resource person for his endowment lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman Gar. Thank you, Secretary Gar. And uh, respected all members. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a wonderful speech and a very practical way you have explained your project management. So, may, may I ask members, anybody want to have any questions, sir? Sir, anybody has any questions, sir? Or even suggestions for my future working. I know you're all experts in uh, this. Yes, energy. sir. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Hello? Yeah. yeah we are able to listen. You please uh, tell your. Uh, yeah, good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your. Uh, very enlightening uh, seminar and speech presentation. It's very good, very good. Uh, on uh, on uh, transmission front, you have uh, covered very much. I am a retired chief engineer from uh, uh, this uh, TSS PDCL, sir. Oh, okay. APSCB. Okay. So we had an opportunity when we were AEs in 1986. 87, 88, uh, we, uh, we used to see Dr. Tataro. He is a really a, a towering personality at that, at that time. We are very privileged to work with him. Uh, as, uh, coming to your uh, presentation, sir, regarding this uh, distribution side, I think uh, uh, you have just touched. Eh? And transmission side also, there are now monopole designs are coming up. Yeah. I think you are also working on it, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. So, because uh, I, at present, I am working for Engineering Staff College of India. I am head of the department. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, we, we will be in touch with you, sir. Uh, we, we heard about you. Sure, sir. And uh, uh, we wanted to work with you also for other consultancy services. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else, sir? Sir, anybody has any questions you can even uh, send to IEA Telangana State Center email or uh, contact the number. We can uh, provide that questions to our Sir uh, Prakash uh, and we can very well reply in case you remember. I'd like to just to clarify to Vidya Sagar because the topic is a very broad one. I didn't go in into yeah. depth of uh, anything, but I yes. have uh, separate lectures for distribution separate and transmission separate. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So I can uh, share those uh, YouTube links also for you, sir. So okay, have, sir. Uh, one hour, it goes for one, one and a half hour for only transmission. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go into the detail of everything. In, yeah, in now, now the era is of discums because uh, discums are uh, the happening organization agencies now yes, yes, yes. in the entire India. The business is uh, into discums because uh, there is a lot of depth and uh, there is a lot of scope in uh, developing yeah. the uh, distribution Correct. side. Correct. Because uh, generation and uh, transmission side front, I think uh, it's almost it's stabilized, saturated. Sir. They have saturated yes, sir. the technology and other things. But the, there is a lot of uh, scope for development in distribution, distribution sectors. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank Sorry, Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, just wanted to clarify. Sorry, no other question. Uh, may I request our Andre Secretary, Dr. Q. Enter Sampaizar, to kindly propose vote of thanks. Thank you, Chairman, sir. Respected Speaker, Engineer P. Surya Prakash, FIE, Council Member, 
IEI, Engineer B. Brahmaridi, FIE, Chairman, IEI, Telangana State Center, Engineer E. Srinivasachari, FIE, Chairman, ECM of IEI, TSC, and Convener of today's event, past Presidents, past Vice Presidents, Council Members of IEI, past Chairman, past Honorary Secretaries, Members of Telangana State Central Committee, Corporate Members of IEI, Distinguished Guests, Family Members of Dr. Narla Tatarao, representatives of media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Telangana State Center of IEI, and on my own behalf, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to Engineer Peaceful Prakash, FIE Council Member, for addressing the gathering as chief guest with a wonderful topic related to the power systems. I also thank the dignitaries, Council members of IEI, past chairman, past honorary secretaries of IEI Telangana State Center, members of Telangana State Central Committee, corporate members of IEI, and others who made it convenient to attend this event. I also thank the representatives of print and electronic media. Thanks to one and all. Now I request all of you kindly stand for national anthem. Mahesh. Please play national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Putt Kalavanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladhitaranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He 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 Jaya He